continues to roll up big numbers. A total of 688 yards today. Lucky the offense clicked because the defense gave up 34 points to a horrible New Mexico team. The Aztecs won it 40-34. Dan McGuire, another terrific day. Avoids the rush and hits Jimmy Ray. McGuire, 33 of 49 for 530 yards. Second quarter, McGuire back to pass, looking and finding Ray for the touchdown. Aztecs up 24-21. Then late in the first half, McGuire to Ray again. He gets in. It counted. Aztecs up 31-21 at half. But the Lobos crept back. The defense did not do a good job. Marcus Goodlow hit Eric Morgan for the score. Lobos down by only three. But the Aztecs would put it away. All three receivers caught at least 100 yards worth of passes. Patrick Rowe has this one. It's the seventh straight game. He's hit 100. It's one short of the record. The Aztecs now 5-4 and four in the year. I think the Aztecs... 34, the final 530 yards passing for Dan McGuire in that ball game. But of course, he couldn't do it without quality receivers, and one of them is with us right now. That is Dennis Airy. He is 88 yards, folks, away from the 1,000 yard mark in receiving for this year. If you get it, Patrick Rowe already has it. That would be only the second combination in NCAA history to do that. That would have to be quite a thrill. Yeah, um, after the last game, I really didn't, wasn't sure if I was going to be able to attain that goal, but. Uh, after yesterday's showing, I think that's become a major goal right now for me. Hey, what about all these uh, late finishes, I guess we can say? You guys bury teams early, but just can't put them away. What's happening? Um, I think just the lack of sharpness. We haven't been really sharp, and uh, when we get up on a team, we just haven't been going for the throw it like the coach has been asking us to do in the locker room at halftime. Uh, but I think the defense stood tall, unlike they did you know, against Wyoming, and they you know, made the key interceptions and key turnovers late in the game to help us. I know I talked to you earlier in the year. While you have good speed, you'd be more the possession type receiver, I guess, compared to a Patrick Rowe who is a real burner. You have aspirations of playing pro football? Um, yeah, I do, but I think a key thing to my success would be my speed, and I'm going to have to work on my strength a little bit more. Uh, but I'll take it any way it comes, possession or game breaker, it doesn't matter to me. How about a little advice from a former All-Pro? Kellen, what, uh, what advice can you <laughs> give the young man? Forget about football. Think of something else to do. Become a broadcast. Work with Jim Stone. Dennis, if you don't make it to the National Football League, what are your plans after graduation? Um, right now, I really don't know. I, I think I'm, to get my degree is my main goal, but after that, I'll just have to see how things go for me. And the World Football League starts this March, so I don't think I'll be able to get involved with that this year. But if the NFL isn't an option for me, maybe that will be the year after. Hey, has there been any talk of Patrick Rowe possibly leaving early and turning pro since he's the nation's leading receiver? None that I've heard of. Uh, he hasn't really mentioned it. He's pretty quiet about it. Uh, it might be more of a subject for him when he, you know, at the, towards the end of the season, probably when scouts and agents start, you know, getting a hold of him. All right, Dennis Ari, thank you very much. Uh, the Aztecs a winner yesterday. Uh, UTEP coming up Saturday night. What do you expect there? Um, I, I don't want to, you know, give anything away, but I think we should be victorious in that game. Uh, I think we have to be victorious in the next two games because uh, they're talking about future plans for us, not sh you know, shutting us out of a bowl picture later. All right, yeah, the Independence Bowl is what they're talking about. Dennis Airy, our guest. Uh exciting player the American Football League produced. Number 19, Lance Allworth, nicknamed Bambi. His forest was opposing secondaries. And in this version of Bambi, he had the fire. And the forest didn't get burned. Opposing cornerbacks did. My idea was when they threw it, it was mine because that's the way it was supposed to be. <laughs> you know, I didn't think about anybody else even being there. Bambi is now 50 years old. Doesn't seem that long ago that Lance and the gang were tearing up the AFL. He won three pass receiving titles, had seven consecutive 1,000-yard seasons, and he'll be the first to tell you he had plenty of help. Everything was perfect for me, and uh, even with the system that they ran here. I mean, I feel very fortunate and uh, have a lot of God-given talent, but so do practically every guy that comes to the pros. And to play with Sid Gilman and Hadle and all the guys that I played with and have a system that worked for me and made me look good, hey, I couldn't ask for anything better. Weak safety man runs to Lance 
And again, Lance, you run that hook and, and get that leveling off period and sit down, and then you skip off from there. You know, there are a lot of guys that, you know, I look back at it, that, that, uh, that had as much ability or more than I had, just never a chance to exploit it or use it. You know, so Sid was perfect. The city was great. Uh, I'm still here. <laughs> Lance has gone from catching footballs to catching fish. This is Bambi's hobby now. He spends as much time as he can on his 50-foot boat, aptly named 19's toy. Once he collected receiving records, now he goes after record-setting marlin. Well, this is, this is like three, 400-pound test line. These are off of the big fish, the blues and blacks. And James, the guy that's on the boat that runs it, is one of the top three marlin fishermen in this part of the world. Lance has had his setbacks. He was bankrupt when he left football. He says it was a case of putting his trust and money into the wrong hands. 16 years ago, he rallied. He got into the storage business. Since then, his company has built over two and a half million square feet of storage space. The future looks bright. What's your favorite place to take this boat? I hope I haven't been there yet. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck finding it. Jim Laslovic for Sports Wrap. The stadium to see it. Moreover, last night's game against UTEP also guaranteed them their second straight winning season under head coach Al Luganbill. It was a game with its fair share of excitement. Like Roy Ross putting UTEP on the board with this 99-yard kickoff return. The Miners take an early lead 13 to 10. The Aztecs ground game was something special last night. They come back with their own big gun, T.C. Wright. He'll go 47 yards for six points. The Aztecs take the lead for good, 20 to 16. Dan McGuire had another 300-yard passing game, yes, but it was backup Cree Morris throwing two touchdown passes. The 67-yarder to Patrick Rowe near the end of the game put Rowe over 100 yards for the eighth straight game, tying an NCAA record. But it appeared UTEP coach David Lee wasn't impressed. He and Aztec coach Al Luganville had some words after the game. Luganville says Lee was making too much of it. You know, Patrick Rowe had six yards from 100 yards in a game which would, uh, I am told, tied an NC2A record. And we felt that it, you know, was in the kid's best interest to try to get him the six yards. You know, it's not our intent ever here to run up the score on anybody if that's what was construed by that. Besides Rowe's personal record, the team tied a record set by Houston two years ago with two receivers going over a thousand yards for the season. Dennis Harry, of course, the other.